And we're back, folks. Jason here to walk you through the very important features of the transform panel, which is the scale corners in scale, stroke, and effects. If you don't have your transform panel up, you're definitely going to need it for this one. Go under Window, call up Transform. Now, why is this so important to understand why we need to have these turned on at certain times and turned off other times? Well, I'm going to show you this because I've got this shape right here. And I have gone in with my direct selection tool, selected the one end, and I have pulled my corner widgets in to the maximum widgetness. Okay, so they used to be out here. I pulled those corner widgets in until I got to the point where I could not widget the corners anymore. And you see that turns red. I'm going to go back to my selection tool, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to scale this. So I select the container, pull handle, and I'm going to scale this larger. You see when I scale it larger, it keeps those corners, but it doesn't keep the entire rounded end. But if I scale it smaller here, every time I try to scale it any shorter than this, it won't go any shorter. It won't let me. See? It won't let me do it any shorter because my corner radiuses are at their maximum widgetness. So I try to scale this. <clears throat> All it does is it makes the container you know, narrower, but it doesn't do it height-wise. And that's really frustrating because those corners cannot be scaled any further. So if I choose the Scale Corners button, now when I go in and I scale this larger and smaller, it's going to keep those ends at the perfect radius, and it's going to allow me to scale it up and down. And if I hold down my Shift key, you'll notice that I can scale this smaller and smaller and smaller. If I hold down my Shift key and make it larger, it's going to keep those corner radius and it's going to allow me to scale it up and down. And I can make those smaller and smaller and smaller, scaling those corners. If I don't have that scale corner, it's not going to let me do that. So that's an important thing, especially if I'm trying to do something that's consistent. I'm going to take this object and I'm going to duplicate this by holding down my Option or Alt and click and drag. If I scale the corners and I scale this down this way, those corner radiuses are going to match the corner radiuses here. It's going to keep that corner radius. If I didn't scale those corners and I turn that off, what's going to happen when I scale this down is it's going to start to round the entire bottom even more and I don't get the same kind of look and feel. So depending on whether you want to keep those corner radiuses consistent, you can scale your corners. Now, scaling your stroke and effects is also something that's interesting. If I were to take a shape and take this shape right here, and I'm going to take it and scale it down, right now I have a 10-point stroke. If I scale this down, and holding down my Shift key, it's going to constrain it, I scale it down, and right now it's still a 10-point stroke. Okay? Well, maybe I want the stroke to stay consistent. If I do want it to stay consistent, I'm going to turn off my scale stroke and effects. Now if I turn on my scale stroke and effects and I pull this larger, the bigger it gets, the bigger my stroke gets. Okay? So now it's no longer 10 point stroke, it's some odd number. Okay? I'm going to set this back to 10 points and hit return. So, if I do want to keep my items consistent, I can scale the stroke and effects so no matter what size I do it, the stroke weight will always remain the same. If I don't do that, and I have something with an effect on it here, I'm going to show you what happens. If I scale the stroke and effects, in fact, let me duplicate this so we can see what the original looks like when we do scale the stroke and effects, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to hold down my Shift key, and I'm going to scale that larger. The effect gets larger, and the stroke gets larger. I'm going to turn off the scale stroke and effects, and I'm going to scale this one larger and I end up with a very different result. You'll see it's not scaling the effect, it's basically stretching the effect out over a larger area and not actually scaling it with my object. So, we have two of the exact same shapes with the exact same effect applied. However, you scale them and you get a totally different result. So that's something that you definitely want to think of. Now the one thing that it does not apply to is when you have an open line. When you scale the stroke and effects, it's only going to be on a shape. If I take this line and I make it, all it's going to do is it's simply going to make the line longer or shorter. Okay? It doesn't actually change 
the stroke weight. It has to be on a closed shape in order to do this. Here, it just assumes that you're making the line longer or shorter, and it doesn't go in and scale the effect because it's not a closed shape. So if you do want to keep things consistent, you can go ahead and turn off the scale stroke and effects so that when you go in and you make it larger and smaller, it won't scale the stroke. But if you do want to scale it up and down, you can turn that on. Now you're going to have different scenarios of when you do want to keep those things scaled and there's things that you don't. Maybe if I have something like this and I would like to have two of these, I want to make sure that they're both going to be 10 point strokes. I'm not going to scale the stroke and effects. So if I go in and I scale this whole thing down, I'm going to have both of these shapes that are both going to be 10 point strokes around them. If I don't do that and I choose the scale stroke and effects and I scale this down, you can see that I now get a reduced size, but also a reduced stroke. I'm going to undo that. Now, can you go ahead and scale the corners with this as well? Yes, you can mix and match. If I want to scale the corners too, and I don't want to scale the stroke and effects, or I do, again, you can mix and match this stuff. I'm going to scale everything. So now when I hold down my shift key and I scale this down, it's going to go ahead and scale it. So I get a mini replica and keeping the same look of this radius here. The radius is not the same because of course it's smaller but it's going to give me a reduced size and it keeps the same look of the radius here because I told it to scale the corners. If I undo this and I don't scale the corners and I don't scale the stroke and effects and I make this much smaller, you'll see that those corners will remain exactly the same size as this and I get a very different result. So if you've set your corner radius to be a particular size, which you can do in the transform panel, if I take my direct selection tool and select one corner, you can see over here I have my corner radius is set to 20 points. If I select this shape, those corner radiuses are also set to 20 points. So even though this may look different, because this is smaller, those corner radiuses are identical. Again, you may not want to have that. You may want to go in and say, yes, I want to scale the corners. So when I scale everything down, those corners are going to make it look like they're the same, but then when I select those corners, you'll see that the corner radius is now down to around nine and a half. So these are choices that you have to make when you're going in and scaling anything with a stroke or corner. And whenever you turn it on, everything you do from that point will then go ahead and either scale the corners if that's checked or scale the stroke and effects. If you have them both checked, it's going to scale everything. If you do not want anything to be scaled, you simply turn those off and everything from that point on will not be scaled. It's something that you have to be constantly aware of.